Vince is back. Yes, Vince McMahon has returned to the WWE Board of Directors. Now, exactly what all of this means, the story is not over now. There's there's a lot of things going on. But right now, he is back. And we're going to go over all of it after the break. But essentially, Vince claims that he must be there to facilitate a sale of WWE. He must be back. Now, WWE did send out a letter to the talent, which I have right here. And, uh, and this is what the letter says. Today, WWE formally announced that our founder, Vince McMahon, has rejoined the company's board of directors. The management team will remain in place with Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan as the co-CEOs and Paul Levesque as the chief creative officer. And we are at a unique moment, blah, 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 blah. So what they're saying right now is that Vince is back to facilitate a sale, but that's it. Does anybody here believe any of this? Anyway, we'll talk about all of this after the break, because there's a lot going on. And, uh, and we'll never have time to cover it all, but we're going to do our best. And there's a little bit of other news as well, but not sure anything is going to uh, trump this insurrection here on January 6, 2023, but we shall see. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Going to try and get Dave on today, but he couldn't do it. He's actually doing another show right now. But if you are not a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, this might not be the worst day. I think he and Garrett will be up later tonight with a subscriber-only show. He'll be up with me this weekend with a subscriber-only show. And we'll have a lot of stuff. The new Observer has a lot on this story, although way more came out today. Yesterday's Observer was all about what he had threatened, and then when we woke up today, it all had come to pass. So, I guess, where to begin with this story? Well, I suppose we could start with... uh, we could start with this from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Friday SEC filing confirmed that former WWE chairman and CEO Vince McMahon is officially back on the company's board of directors. With three existing seat holders ousted and two others resigning. Those ousted were very much behind pushing for the investigation of Vince McMahon. This follows Thursday's news by the Wall Street Journal that McMahon was plotting his return to WWE in order to pursue a sale and be involved in the company's upcoming media rights deals. He resigned as both chairman and CEO in July 2022. By the way, for those of you angry at uh, Tony Khan's tweet today about how everyone is being nice to him at work last 24 hours, let's read what happened here. McMahon resigned as both chairman and CEO in July in the wake of a board investigation into multiple hush fund payouts to women who uh, he had allegedly, well, a lot of different things, sexual misconduct. News broke in December. He was looking to make his return to the company amid the feeling he got bad advice. It was bad advice after those, uh, after that scandal and the accusations and the hush money, the company hush money. He was given bad advice to step away. He decided now would be the time to return. 10 a.m. Friday, WWE issued a press release in which they said they welcomed McMahon's return and are looking forward to exploring all strategic alternatives to maximize shareholder value. As Vince McMahon stated yesterday, WWE has an exceptional management team in place, and I do not intend for my return to have any impact on their roles, duties, or responsibilities. Now, Vince had had, uh, requested to return to the board uh, a little while back, and uh, and they essentially told him no. And so uh, this was plan B. So uh, his return includes a reinstatement. Think about this, by the way. I think I should just give up the prediction show. 
His return includes a reinstatement of former WWE executives George Barrios and Michelle Wilson. Do you remember what happened to them? He fired them. He thought that they had certain ideas. He had certain ideas. He was like, get out of here, and he fired them, and the stock collapsed when he fired them. Well, now they're back. They are filling uh, spots uh, from others on the board that have uh, quit or uh, or been uh, forced off the board. Hey, Brian, can I throw something in right there? If you'd like, yeah. Wilson and Barrios stepped down in January of 2020 because they did not want the the company to take the network that they helped to create and license that network, okay? Vince had an issue with that because of what Nick Khan was doing and then further did in getting their content licensed and getting massive television deals for them, which basically opened up the door for Nick Khan to come in. So as Vince is saying that not only is he the only one that can help guide them through any sale or media negotiations deal. He is bringing in Wilson and Barrios, who basically had to go to the side because they didn't like the way that they were doing the media negotiation deals. So everybody looking to work as a happy family. So go ahead. Now, there's a lot. I mean, there's so much going on here, but I'm going to try to make it. I'm going to try and make it easy for everybody. Okay. So. As noted, he wanted to come back, and they told him, no, this will not be in the best interest of the shareholders. So he has done what he has done here to uh, basically put himself back on the board and uh, and get rid of people that, uh, you know, were involved in uh, spearheading this investigation and putting his own people in, okay? Now, if you guys remember... If you guys remember, there's a lot of talk about the stock market and the stock today because this this stock is up 24% right now, 24%, okay? Now, the first time that there was a story in the Wall Street Journal about uh, maybe two, three weeks ago, the first time that there was a story where it had been mentioned that Vince wanted back, do you guys remember what happened to the stock that day? Stock fell, okay? Now... Vince is back, and the stock is skyrocketed. So w- w- what's going on here? Well, the original story about how Vince wanted back in was merely that. Vince wanted back in. Now, if you only hear that Vince wants back in, well, what do you you presume? You presume that he wants to come back and do everything that he was doing before. The stock market was not bullish on that idea. The difference here, which is very important, the difference here is that Vince claims that I am not coming back to do all of those things that I did before. As I noted before the break, they did send out a letter to talent. There's an all-employee uh, meeting that's going to kick off in, in 12 minutes now. It does not involve the wrestlers, the talent, anybody. It's only the company employees, okay? I want to make that clear. But in the, in the message that they sent out to talent, it specifically said, Vince has rejoined the board of directors. The management team will remain in place. Stephanie McMahon and Nick Khan as co-CEOs, which that tells you that what they're claiming is Vince is not coming back to regain his role as CEO. And it notes that Paul Levesque is still the chief creative officer. So what they're claiming is that Vince is not coming back to head creative. They're claiming, and Vince is claiming, that he is only coming back Because they are gearing up to do negotiations for a new television deal. And Vince believes that this is the prime opportunity to sell this company. It can only be done with him, which in fact legally it can because he can block a sale. And so therefore he must, he must return to facilitate the sale. This is why the stock has skyrocketed, okay? Now, it does not appear that a sale is imminent. I honestly don't know if he actually wants to sell. He says he does. They say that's why he's coming back. But I don't trust this guy. I don't know about the rest of you. I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist. But does anybody on this planet actually believe 
that literally he has no desire to come back and run creative and have his hands in everything. The reason that he's coming back is, I'm sure, he wants full control over everything again. And obviously, if there is a sale, he wants to capitalize on this sale. And he wants to make it clear, or he wants to make sure that if there is a sale, he will somehow guarantee his position in this company when it is sold. Now, you know, we learned from uh, Ted Turner that nothing like that's ever a guarantee, okay? But I think that's what he wants. And, uh, and I think he also knows that if this company is sold and he is ousted, well, once it's sold, there's no way he's getting back in. So there's a lot going on. But right now, the claim is he's just there to help facilitate this sale, which the stock market, you know, investors are like, they're fine with that. Uh, but we shall see what happens in terms of putting that little hand in all of the other pots, which I would like to talk more about after the break, but we'll get Mike's thoughts as well. Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervive, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Anything you want to add or should I continue on? <laughs> That's up to you. It's your show. Well, Would I, you like me to throw in a little something here? Or I not? got more I can say, and then you can jump in if you want. We got Go we got a half hour. So first off, this is not this is not over now. It could be over, but it's not over in the sense that this this could end up a legal issue. But it's going to end up a legal issue if something happens and this stock plummets. Like if if he had if he had walked back onto the board and the stock had dropped to 30, 40, I mean this would have been a bloody ugly battle. Uh, he baby faced himself the stockholders with this. But he it shot up. Okay. Yeah. But it shot up because of the idea that he's coming in to sell this place. And the stock market or, doesn't or, care. Or this is or it's the impending media deals. Either way, it's a windfall for investors. Well, the That's... point is I think everybody knew these media deals were coming up. But the difference is Vince is coming in to say, I'm ready to sell this place. Let's get this deal done. So that's what's happening like now. That's what that's what this bump is about. But which is is crazy because in the same breath, it is directly opposite what they have proven, which is they can do this without him. And the fact that they don't need him, they need Nick Khan more to do these deals. I mean, the whole part of him for years, we talked about it with him leaving was this company will tank without Vince. There was always that concern that that could happen. And now look at it, but now we're saying this is what he's saying he's got to come back and do. It's just, it's bizarre. Well, the, the company is is worth, I don't know, whatever, however many billions, but it's going to sell for like, I don't know, six, seven, eight billion dollars, a preposterous amount of money. And that's going to go into the pockets of shareholders, portion of that. And so uh, that's that's what's going on. Now, my point is, that's what's going on now, Okay. What's going to happen if, you know, as time goes on, if it becomes clear that, you know, there actually isn't a sale coming imminently? I mean, what's the stock going to do then? Uh, whether this, whatever happens here is going to be determined by the stock price. And what he can get his hand in is also likely going to be determined by the stock price. Now, he is saying he's not going to be doing all this stuff. And what is, what is uh, you know... Here's the thing with whether Vince gets involved in creative or not. And I want to make this clear because a lot of you complain and don't watch the show. I do, okay? Here's how you're going to know. First off, if he's there every week, it's going to be a pretty good indication, okay? But here's how you're going to know if he is pulling those strings behind the scenes. Well, when you see a mass layoff, pretty good indication. That's number one. Number two... When that Raw show ends and they got no matches announced for next week, that's a pretty good indication. When that Raw show ends and they've got five matches announced and two of them happen the next week and three don't happen at all, that's a pretty good indication. When guys get all their information about what they're going to do next Monday on Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever, and then all of a sudden on Monday it's all different, you're going to have a pretty good indication, okay? I know I do these Raw reports and I talk about things and... You know, some things are stupid, and so you cherry-pick, that means Vince is back. He ain't back right now, okay? But trust me, 
You're going to know immediately when that guy is back in charge of creative. Even if he's hiding in some bunker on Jupiter and uh, eh, madly texting all of his information to uh, Hunter and Steph. You're going to know. Trust me. Now, what's really sad if he comes back is all these people that work there. Because, listen, I have not talked to everybody. But I talk to a lot of people, and I've talked to people that talk to a lot of other people. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that everybody, every last single person was happy when that guy was gone. But you know what? Most of them were. You know what happened? For most of those wrestlers, and you know what's funny is like, ah, oh, show still sucks, blah, blah, blah. Hey, you know what? When what's his face wins the title, they go, you deserve it or whatever. No one deserves a belt. It's fake, okay? But you know what those people deserve? They deserve to not hate going to work, okay? If you have a job where, like, stuff happens and, and you're dealing with, you know, people who have died or what, that's a job that, like, that probably ain't fun going to work every day, okay? But there's no reason that you should hate going to work for a wrestling company. The reason people hated it was because of one guy who liked to make everybody's lives miserable, well, that guy got ousted, and you know what? A lot of people suddenly had fun going to work again. It wasn't so bad. You could go to work, and you, you would know what you were going to do, and you would do matches, and you'd have fun, and you could actually talk to the guy in charge, and he actually would really legitimately listen to your ideas, and he'd let you do this, and he'd let you do that, and he'd call you up and pay you more, all this stuff. You know, the morale since Vince left is night and day night and day now these poor blokes may have to suffer again god that's all i heard about was miserable people today like god are we really are we really gonna have to go back to that again well you know what he says no i don't believe him i hope for the best for you guys i cross my fingers i wish for only the best for all the wrestlers that work there even the ones that have bad matches they're all people i hope for the best and, man, everyone getting on poor Regal. Golly. Come on. You know, I can't speak with that much color or vigor over how it's going to affect these guys if he comes back in a creative role. Um, you know, right now, in reality, because he's not even in a creative role, at least that's what he's saying, and I know what you're saying, absolutely, but, like, you know, he's asking to come back to join the board and how they responded back to him. Yes, they unanimously responded back to him saying that your return at this time is not prudent. It's not prudent at this juncture because there's still investigations pending. And what is also being maybe overlooked in this is, quote, a variety of factors, including non-public information the board has become aware of and its risks yeah. to the company non -public and Non-public information. There's more, everybody, that hasn't come out yet. Of placing a greater spotlight on these issues, unquote. And we heard about the issue with the spa member in California that caused her boyfriend to come to a WWE event with a baseball bat and get turned away. And we remember that story. And... Manjeet Singh and Ignis LaHood, you know, uh, LaHood was just added to the board last year, late last year. Manjeet Singh, though, was the one who was the board's internal investigator into all of this stuff as it was happening. And you also, if you recall, and maybe some of you do, there were board members that were that resigned last year and it's not like anybody is following them on a golf course asking hey man what went down why did you quit we still don't know why those people quit that was after a whole bunch of palace intrigue had taken place and i know there's the palace intrigue part of this and all of it and the the obvious what it could lead to if he does get involved in creative and all that sort of stuff and how these people can work together but this guy also has been accused of coercion. He's been accused of rape. We have the Chatterton thing being brought up. We had another suit that has been brought because they've, you know, the statute of limitations, they changed those rules. So, like... Yeah, but how dare Tony tweet? But how dare Tony tweet, God. you know? I is know. that what this has come to? 
Yeah, that's what it's come to. For some people who are that simple-minded, that's what this thing has come to because they can't step back and look at this. And when you unfold the picture, it goes in a lot of different ways. Financially, this, that, the third. There's a lot of different moving parts here. But when you stand back and remember what this guy is in trouble for, you know, I know that if nobody pays attention, much like Dana White, and the stock price is fine and the ratings are good on slap fight once it debuts because it was only pushed back a week i mean you know if if all that nobody lays the pressure on if nobody holds the heat to to the wwe investors and to the other board members and to the company in general and to its 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 darling advertisers then nothing's going to change if he's back and, and maneuvering these deals after what he's been accused of after the company has proven they don't need him to do these deals when the guy they got from CAA is the most important part of doing these deals. I don't know. I mean, I can't believe it's really that much about the dollar, but it, it usually is. Of course it is. Kidding me? It's all about the dollar. Pathetic. That's the way things go, dude. Still, still pathetic. But did you know that in January, WWE presents the Royal Rumble on the show will be what is being called a pitch black match. Why, you ask? Well, Mountain Dew apparently has a drink called Mountain Dew Pitch Black. And they got a lot of money. If it's all blacked out and nothing happens, we're actually the winners because, you know, we don't have to actually watch it. Jared, put a black thing on the screen here. It's It would be like if the match was like this for 10 minutes, and all you heard was, oh, ow, boom. Oh. No, Mike, stop it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.